Hey, good morning, everybody. What a wonderful morning it is. Happy Friday. Thank God. Thank goodness it is Friday. Hey, we made it another week. To God be the glory. Happy Friday to you. I uh, hope and pray that you are looking forward to a great weekend. Uh, I don't know what you're going to do this weekend other than what you've done all week, and that is chill uh, at the crib. Uh, but you know what? Just prepare now to uh, stream live at your church or preferably if you don't have a church, then stream live at New Life. We'd love to have you on New Life Tube 1, New Life Tube 1 at 930. We would love for you to stream live with us. And uh, it will be a blessing if you don't already have Streamlight. Or you can just squeeze us in uh, with all the other churches that you're watching on Sunday morning. That's the great thing for us being home uh, is that you get to go to everybody's church. And you and check this out. You don't have to be late. You don't have to be late. You don't have to worry about get anybody getting you a parking space. You can just show up and just be at anybody's church. And so, uh, at any rate, that's what you ought to be doing this weekend. It's time for morning manna. It's time for morning manna. And uh, it's always the text, the talk, and the takeaway. Going to give you the text, going to give you a talk, and then I'm going to give you a take on it, a takeaway. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to give the hearts and the lights. You're going to give your revelation in the comments. You're going to share the manna, and you're going to put me in following and subscription-wise uh, so that you can always uh, check out when I'm coming up, okay? That's what we are going to do. That's our cooperation. That's what we always do, Manna family. We always do that with each other. I got something I bring to the table. You have something you bring to the table. Okay, so here it is. Do you remember? Now, some of y'all might not be old enough to remember this, but I remember when my mama used to say, mind your business. Yeah, but you were in the room and uh, you shouldn't have been in there no anyhow. And uh, and then you had the you had the audacity to ask a question what grown folk were talking about. And then and then everybody realized and your mama would turn around and say, will you mind your business? You know what? That's what we're going to talk about today. Mind your business. Let's look at the text. The text is this Romans 12, one through two. You know it. Well, I want you to hear it again for the first time and listen to this translation. This translation is powerful. It says do not conform any longer, listen, to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Here it is. Get this. Then you can test and approve God's will, his good and pleasing will. Now, the translation of that is this. Then you will know which direction to go into. Then you will know which direction you can go into. If you don't follow the pattern of the world in your mind, but transform your mind. Let's talk about that this morning. Let's talk a little bit about that. The first thing you need to do before you can uh, change the pattern of your mind or mind your business, you got to find your mind. Find your mind. That's the first thing I want you to grab a hold of. Find your mind. Now, let me give you a little backdrop of how the scriptures break down the mind. The mind, as in the Greek, in the New Testament, where we get the Septuagint, and when it began to break down the uh, Greek words in the New Testament, it's the, uh, the Greeks understood the body to be, or our lives to be made up of the mind, the body, uh, and the spirit, it's three, three-dimensional. But in the Old Testament, the Hebrew understanding of our being was that we have a soul and a body. It's two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional with the Greek, two-dimensional with uh, the Hebrew understanding. So you said, now, Bishop, now what does that have to do with us trying to figure out our mind? Is because the mind is <clears throat> in the Hebrew understanding is a part of your soul. But in the Greek understanding, it is a separate entity altogether. The mind, the body, and the spirit. Now, we tend to go with that three-dimensional piece, but uh, when we bring it together, the mind, the mind is really contained in the heart, in the heart. So when the scriptures, when Greek 
translation in New Testament talks about the heart. It is talking about the mind. And in the Hebrew, it is talking about the soulish realm or our soul. What does that mean? The first thing you got to do is ground it and find out where it is. So when we hear this thing about mind, it's a love the Lord with all your might and your mind and all of that. What it's talking about with your heart, with your heart. So, okay. So then we know we're talking about the heart with respect to the mind. All right. Here's the second thing I want you to get. Well, then clean your mind. Get a clean mind. David said it well. And this is what we get by that. David said, uh, Lord, give me a clean heart. He was talking about his mind. Well, how do you know that? He was talking about his mind because remember uh, Psalm 51 is where he then writes and he's talking about the fact that uh, he has to get a clean heart because he's been peering over the balcony watching some pornographic movie of Bathsheba taking a bath. Where does it reside in his mind, his heart. Okay, so I find my mind so I can clean my heart or clean my mind. You got to have a clean mind so that you can do something. All right, here's the third thing. That means you got to develop it. You got to develop your mind. All right, find your mind, clean your mind. Now develop your mind. Develop your mind. James 1 and 8 says this. Now, a double-minded person is unstable where? In all his ways. In all his ways. Why? Because the mind has not, James is saying, your mind has not been developed or stabilized. That's why, uh, uh, um, that's why Philippians comes back and say, think on these things. Put your mind on these things. What's the other things that are good, pure, holy, virtuous, honest? Those are the things that I stabilize my mind with. When I stabilize my mind with it, John 14 and 1 says, let not your heart, your mind be troubled. He said, I'm going to give you perfect peace whose what? Mind is stayed on thee. So here, here we go. Then that means if you mind your business, then you can do here. Here's the takeaway. Then you can change your mind so you can change your life. Change your mind. You can change your life. I don't know what you're thinking about, but whatever you're thinking about, you're going to sooner or later start doing. So you have to change your mind. Find it, clean it, develop it. Hey, the Lord be with you today. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Share the manna, share the manna. And I'll see you Monday with more morning manna. Have a great weekend. God bless you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Bye now.